Hello friends and welcome to Fire Emblem Discussion. Today we're going to be doing the Chapter 1 Maddening Guide. Uh, and if you haven't seen the Prologue Guide, go check that out if you need help there. But, let us get started on Chapter 1. So the month leading up to Chapter 1, you'll have one exploration time. Just do all the side quests there and you should be fine. You'll get a professor level up, which will increase your earnings and move you closer to the ever important higher rankings to get better weapons, battalions, and other equipment. Battle Preps. First, let's talk about deployment. Any team composition can work, but some will make it easier than other. Here are my general rules for Chapter 1 deployment. First, you want at least one magic user to deal with enemies like Dadu, Dimitri, and Edelgard. Also, just being able to deal reliable chip damage is really, really useful in the early game of uh, maddening mode, but also it's important throughout the entire game. Do be warned though, that all magic users has a, have a very limited amount of magic uses at this point, because none of them can be in a magic class. They're all either nobles or commoners, which make it hard for them to contribute for the entire map, but they can help you take down those really high defense enemies like to do. Number two, healing magic is not necessary whatsoever in this chapter. Vulneraries can get the job done. There's enough break between action if you go uh, the right direction that you'll be able to heal up yourself. Just make sure everyone has a vulnerary and you should be good. Number three, Curve Shot. Curve Shot can outrange every enemy on this map. Avoiding counters from mages is huge and just being able to deal reliable chip with higher hit rates and whatever else is very nice. So you'll want to, to keep that in mind when you're composing your team. Curve Shot can be a great addition. And last, number four, we have Tempest Lance. This combat art is the strongest attack you will have in the early game. It adds a lot of attack and a little bit of hit to a single Lance Strike, and that is just invaluable at this point. So let's take a look at what my team would look like um, if I were to follow these rules. I do bring a magic user, like Hubert, Lysithia, or Annette. Annette will struggle to deal meaningful damage, admittedly, but her personal skill allows her to give any unit plus four strength uh, for a turn, so it really makes up for that uh, more, more often than not. Next, I like to bring one Curve Shot user. I don't always, you'll notice in the video that I don't always have a Curve Shot user on my team, but it can be so useful to deal that reliable chip. You'll want to bring someone like Bernadetta, Claude, or Ash uh, into battle. Next, I want to have two Tempest Lance users. In the case of Black Eagles, you only have one at that point, being Ferdinand. So, for, But for the other routes, it's nice to have Leone and Lorenz or Sylvain slash Ingrid. You could bring either one and Dimitri. I do think Sylvain will deal a little more damage early on and might be a little more useful on this map, but you could do Ingrid if you would like. And of course, like I said, Dimitri just comes with it. Now I say two Tempest Lance users, you can get away with just using one if you wanted to bring uh, Hilda instead of Lorenz or Leone or something like that. Uh, that can be fine as well. And of course to finish off the party, Byleth will be there and in the case of Black Eagles, Edelgard will finish off the fifth spot. Now for inventory. Make sure every character has a vulnerary and take the weapons from undeployed units. The most important weapons to give are extra lances for Tempest Lance, bows, and gauntlets. Make sure all of those find their way to deployed units. And in the case of gauntlets, you're only going to find one pair in Chapter 1, and that is with Golden Deer on Raphael. No other route has it, and that's what make, it makes Golden Deer a little more manageable. You can give those gauntlets to Byleth and will be able to deal some reliable damage, and also be able to tank more effectively while being able to still deal damage but not taking a double attack uh, on enemy phase can be really nice. Let's move into general strategy. You can either go left or right. Both are possible, but one is much easier than the other. Going right to face this cluster of enemies first will cause the enemy on the left to flank your party. This causes the pace of the battle to be dictated by the enemy. If you go to the left, the army on the right will not mess with you until the left army is routed. You can pull enemies one or two at a time, and it is generally safer. It may take a bit longer than going right, but it is the reliable way to go. Most enemies will double you. There is no getting around it. Most units cannot handle more than one round of combat before healing. Ranged attacking is going to be your way around this. 
Avoid taking counterattack damage as much as possible by utilizing ranged chip damage and finishing off with combat arts like Tempest Lance. All right, let's talk about some route specific strategies. First, for the Black Eagles, who I think will be our, our most in-depth one. I feel Black Eagles have the hardest time in chapter in chapter one. So you will want to follow the general strategy by going left and just bait and switch until you clear the first three enemies. And by bait and switch, I mean uh, lure an enemy with uh, a unit who has high defenses and then finish them off on player phase. After that, you'll want to draw Claude and Hilda by either forcing one of them to attack you through the barrier or using Curve Shot to attack them through the barrier. This will cause them to leave their position and try to meet you around the hill or this little rock formation or whatever it is and just be prepared to meet them on the other side. Dimitri and Dudu are your final major threats. The most important thing you can do is force Dudu to attack you on enemy phase. This will keep him from using his personal skill that boosts his defense. If you wait just at the end of his range, it will give you time to kill him before Dimitri crosses the forest as well. And it'll, again, make sure he attacks you so that he doesn't use his personal skill that boosts his defense. Dimitri will be able to kill just about anyone in your army in one turn if you fight him up close. You will need to chip him down with magic and bows, then finish him off with a powerful combat art. Next, Blue Lions. This is the easiest route for this chapter. Make use of Dudu's personal skill and just follow the general strategy. One thing to note though, is that Dorothea is one of the first three enemies here, and she is terrifying. She is very fast and will hit your unit's low resistance stat. Be careful with who you put in her range. Finally, the Golden Deer. This can be played almost identically to the Black Eagles. Use the same strategy for Dudu and Dimitri, and you should be set. Well, that'll do it for today, friends. Thanks for watching. Make sure to leave your thoughts and questions in the comments. Also, share any advice you have, and don't forget to like and subscribe for more Fire Emblem discussion.